I'm gonna tell you right now, I might not have no black V-neck on, but you might wanna grab your headphones. Y'all already know what time it is, I got the black V-neck on. What is going on, y'all? I have a lot of things to talk about. Shout out to all the people who was on YouTube in the community tab and gave me a list of the topics they wanted me to talk about. Now, a lot of these topics were controversial and they were like, girl, they were heavy. And I am feeling some type of way, girl. I could not blow and get the dust off the black V-neck in time to do it. So I said, girl, let me go ahead and put this green on because when I get through reading y'all and y'all be dead, y'all gonna be as green as this grass growing, okay, on my shirt, okay? Get into it. So let's first start off with the Leela Rashawn situation with Antoine and Nicole Murphy. Um, we've all seen the material. We saw the picture of Nicole Murphy and Antoine sharing what looks to be a consensual kiss. Um, now, parties were saying, oh girl, we're friends, it was a friendly kiss and all that. And now Nicole Murphy is releasing statements and saying, you know, she's apologizing, she feel bad and this and that. Um, and Leela has deleted her and deactivated some of her social media accounts. And it's just a mess. Um, what really, really bothered me um, was all of the conversation about body shaming and is this possibly Leela's fault? Now, I can see some critiques of it being her fault and like you know your man was trash and apparently he's had some children outside of the marriage or whatever but to use body shaming and shaming her for just existing for her having a little bit more fat as to say that's the reason why she was cheated on as if we've never heard of the lemonade album have we've not heard of other beautiful desirable women being cheated on like girl it is 2019 and you are relying on um fat phobia 10 years in your career, 10 plus years in your career, and you see where it's at? Like, I, I just, I don't, and not even just fat phobia, but also transphobia too. Girl, y'all are a hoot. Y'all would literally stand in front of millions of black women, thousands of black women, and y'all would literally talk down to them and then expect them to support you at the same ground. Make it make sense. I really don't get it. I really don't get it, girl. If you have so much hatred for black women, why do you keep making money off of them? Make it make sense. I don't understand that. Especially fat black women. Girl, fix it. So you had so many people on social media saying, oh, Leela, you know, girl, she did gain some weight. You had so many men saying, well, girl, this is what it is. As if to say that only undesirable people get cheated on. And when I'm saying undesirable, that's not to say that this person is not beauty. It's not what society considers to be beautiful. When we look in Vogue and Essence and all these other magazines and stuff and we see these same looking people, we see the biracial looking children on NBC and all other shows, we never see an all dark skin cast. It's probably one dark skin person and it's probably the grandmother, the granddad, or the father. But none of the kids be dark skin, girl. They be either Paper brown or lighter than that. Come on, brown skin girl. Gonna get into that too. <clears throat> so yes, I do think that Nicole Murphy is garbage, but I'm not going to go so far as to call her a home wrecker. Even though I did scream at Lisa Ray her little interview thing with TMZ where she said, you know, I'm not gonna call her a home wrecker, but she seems to be in people's homes and wrecking it. Now that was funny, that was the tea, like, but I don't wanna go so far as to heavily critique Nicole Murphy and put all the blame on her with what looks like to be a consensual relationship, okay? Like, this man and this woman were kissing and it looked like it was consensual, judging from the material, we can be the judge of it. It looked like that she, like, and him were interested in each other. Now what bothers me is that not only is it the husband that has cheated, but it's also the friend because it's cool with Nicole Murphy. And that's just, that's like disrespectful. And I just, I, that's just another level of like, girl, not only do I have to let this man go, but I also have to let my friend go. And girl, sometimes things like that happen and they are trash. And I feel like Lila would go, she would get over this eventually, hopefully. Um, I, I'm hoping that she does, but I know, I can, I can only imagine having to lose two people like that. In a situation like so many things running through your head. But me and I trash, and you know, that's why I just don't want to be so heavy on Nicole Murphy too much because I understand like, girl, these two foes. And I'm not gonna let Antoine trash, but you know, get off the hook from, like he ain't do nothing. So I, I, I just like so much talk about Leela's like gaining weight bothered me because that has nothing to do with anything. People who um, cheat in committed relationships and marriages and stuff, it's not often, it's not, it's not even 10% a chance because they find somebody else desirable. It is not that, I'm gonna tell you something. 
Girl, you can be around the most desirable person and be in a relationship with them, the most desirable person to you. And girl, if it ain't nothing more than just them being desirable that's keeping you there, you're going to go somewhere else because too much of a good thing becomes almost annoying. I never forget, I used to talk to this trade named Lil Red. It was the finest thing I ever talked to, finest like everything. As far as when it comes to desirability, like he was all on that straight hair, hazel eyes, brown skin, like everything that the girls be going up for. He would trade, he played football. Girl, he's still staying in Memphis and South Memphis somewhere. But that man was garbage. He was garbage. He was garbage. He was annoying. And I got bored with him after two, three months. And the guy I talked to after him wasn't nowhere near him. Not to say that he wasn't desirable, but girl, that wasn't keeping me. But I wasn't interested in anything else other than what I was getting, which was sex from him. But to say that it is Leela's fault for her man cheating on her is misogynistic to me. And it's probably misogyny war um, to some folks. I, I wouldn't, I would argue against it, but it's just, it's just very disgusting, and I'm very disgusted at some of the videos, especially some of the comments that folks were making, um, and even on Nicole Murphy and saying that she looks like an actress on Pose. That is transphobic, and you should know better. While we talking about trash, let's continue to talk about Miss Nancy Goodman. Miss Nancy Goodman was at a Bonefish and Grill somewhere, I think, in what, Raleigh, North Carolina, or South Carolina, I don't know, girl. So apparently this happened in Raleigh. I think North Carolina, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, this woman, Nancy Goodman, was in a bonefish grill and there were some black women and apparently, allegedly, or whatever, they were loud, were too loud for her taste. And she, you know, told them to tone it down and she went to the manager and complained about it. So when she came back to confront them, she had called them the N-word. She called them N-word with an E-R. In your opinion, let me show you my money. It's just as green as yours. Right. Oh, you're so stupid, nigga. And then when they asked her about it, she said, yes, I did say it because they were loud and I have anxiety issues and I just didn't know what to do or whatever. Like, girl, somebody being loud causes you to be racist? Like, what does that, that make absolutely no sense at all? How is someone being loud going to make the racism that was already existing in your body, in your mindset, jump out? Girl, make it make sense. Oh my God. If folks are gonna eat this up, like I just, Linus, sis was literally on, sis was literally giving an interview and said she was, she doesn't feel bad for saying that, which is not really surprising. It's not really surprising, but she knows that she was wrong. She knows it because anytime you say something to get somebody, get a reaction out of somebody like that, you know that it's wrong. You know it's wrong, but you said it because you wanted a reaction. Now, if somebody bop you upside your head, then girl, I don't want to hear nothing about um, nothing else, okay? But I hope they find out what job she work at, and I hope they get her fired. I hope they um, harass her all on social media. I hope they do. I hope they find out everything and make her life a living hell because that was completely disrespectful to those black women who were just enjoying themselves. And black folks, and we need to make sure that we call out stuff like this because if she felt uncomfortable because three black women were being loud, think about how many other black folks, who black, unarmed black folks who have been, and I don't even like using the term unarmed because, girl, a mess to say if they armed they need to be, no man. But there have been stories of white folks feeling uncomfortable because somebody was loud and felt the need to take their lives. So girl, that's the absolutely not on me. That's the absolutely not. I just, I, I can't, I can't, I, I just, I'm just disgusted. People asked me to talk about this new um, Harriet Tubman trailer. I have not seen it, I've only seen clips. I'm probably going to do a live stream tomorrow morning or afternoon, and I will watch the trailer with you all and tell you my thoughts. I'm gonna do a special video on it because I'm still doing some research and trying to understand what is going on before I just get a reaction. And I don't wanna be just hyped up just because I wanna see somebody play Harriet Tubman. But there's been a lot of talk about this woman who's playing, I think her name is Cynthia. Um, I think her name is Cynthia. She's from the UK, she's British. And people are saying, Grace should have been a black person in the United States of America. Um, considering Harriet Tubman was in America, United States or whatever. Um, I think I'm kind of, you know, I'm trying to understand a little bit of, of that because I think that goes into the whole Eidos conversation. Um, and I'm not really that, um, you know, knowledgeable on that. Like, I'm still getting information on that. So give me some time. Um, but there was talk that she was 
um, cackling and making fun of black Americans um, a couple of, like a while back. Um, and she was cackling with uh, Miss Lovey, Miss Awesomely Lovey, I think her name is, um, who has built a whole em a media empire and stuff. She got books and stuff. But y'all know she she got she got called out for some anti-black American tweets um, a while back. Like sis, girl, she was talking about we ain't got no culture and all that. So they dragged her. They said that. Miss Sis was right there cackling with Lovey too. So they said, girl, you ain't gonna be around here disrespecting coach, but trying to represent me. So some folks talking about something, they're gonna boycott it. Conversation to be opened up. I will be doing it tomorrow and I'm gonna talk about it on the live stream sometime, probably tomorrow, or whatever. So let me know what you think about that. So let's talk about Diddy and this Lori Harvey situation. Um, so so Lori Harvey is the stepdaughter of Steve Harvey. And apparently Sean P. Diddy Combs was on a date with her, alleged date. And this was being reported by TMZ. Apparently they was on a date um, and she was smiling at all this. And this is not her first time dating a Combs. Like apparently she was um, dating um, Justin, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Justin Combs. So sis said, girl, I can't, if I can't have you, I'm gonna get your dad and make you the step stepchild or whatever. But girl, I, <laughs> it can be highly likely that that wasn't a date. But I do kind of question P. Diddy hanging out with someone who is 20 years younger than him. Um, but he can be helping her with, you know, building a business or something. But I don't trust P. Diddy and his characteristics. I just, I don't, I don't trust him at all. I've always said that I'm just not a fan of Sean P. Diddy Combs. Um, and he just seems like he just wants to... S I'm not here for it. I'm not here for it. So, um, girl. Yeah. Uh, uh, um, I'm not really sure how to feel about it. And I know I said it on a couple of things, but I'm really trying to make sure that I'm careful because I don't necessarily don't want to be like dragging folks who are dating folks or having fun with somebody who's younger than them. But given P did his history, um, and him just being trash in general and some of the things that he said, I just don't trust him around somebody like Lori Harvey. I just don't. And that relationship seems kind of off. It's just something about it. It's just not sitting well with my spirit, girl. My spirit is completely uneasy. But let me know how y'all feel about it. What is... The, I, I remember one of my guys was talking about on Twitter, like, what is the youngest or oldest you would talk to? How does that work? And, you know, like, just because someone is younger does not mean that they're always, you know, preying on them. And I can, I can definitely agree to that because I know I've talked to guys around my age and they did not have the maturity of somebody I talked to that was 25. Now, life experiences are different now, and everybody's age is different. I don't think just because someone is older, they're going to get more wisdom. Oftentimes, they don't, especially if they grew up in a little trash environment. Oh, and shout out to The Grapevine on their latest um, episode talking about love. It was so great. When I get my spirit together, because I was in my feelings watching that video, I have not completely finished it. I mean, 30 minutes was an hour-long conversation. But shout out to all my queens who were there, Aisha, uh, Uchechi, um, Ashley even hopped in there. Ashley love talking about some love, girl. Ashley love talking about some love. So this was right up her alley. She was really talking. She said, girl, I'm going to be the host and I'm going to talk a little bit. So check out the episode of Grapevine. I'm probably going to do a video on that tomorrow, too. Um, I, I just, I, I'm just in such a good energy, and I just appreciate you all supporting me um, during my, my heavy, heavy time last week because I had to recalibrate my spirit, and my spirit is good now. I think I do deal with some type of probably chronic depression, but I have not been diagnosed. But every so often, I do feel like, you know, like my anxiety and depression are fighting each other. And, and I am seeking some type of help and stuff for it. Um, and I just, I, I'm just growing. So just work with me, and I appreciate y'all. Now, since we're talking about cheating men and men trying, I told y'all this video was going to be all over the place. We have Fabulous and Emily are, apparently have broken up. And Fabulous is just out here, uh, just out here stuttering like Stuttering Stanley. He is all on Instagram Live talking about some. He was not on a date. He was meeting up with um, a school teacher that was teaching his son or something. Girl, none of this stuff made sense. I'm happy that Emily has gotten out of that relationship. If it is true, because I feel like she was in a type of serious situation. Um, and I just don't, you know, I'm not here for um, fabulous. I'm just not here for him. He comes off very aggressive and very abusive and he can't keep his hands to himself. So I'm I'm, ho I'm hoping that they have broken up and that sis hasn't found her own way. Oh, I'm hoping so. But sis is out here losing his mind. He losing his mind and I think that Emily probably asked him to be on some dates and talking to some other men. So girl, he gonna have a meltdown and we gonna see it live. Uh, but girl, that ain't making no sense at all. Shout out to my girl Rashandra Pal, she said, I would like to hear your thoughts on the age and fashion and being done to Leela uh, right now. Girl, yes, ma'am. I dragged it, honey. Let me tell y'all something. 
Baby, some of these content creators out here are fat phobic, transphobic, um, anti-black, and they don't realize it. And they have all of the knowledge, all of the information in the world, all the degrees, and they have yet to use it or display it. And we can be a judge of that. And girl, I, I, I know some folks who are going to be like, girl, you being a little bit messy, but I have to tell the truth. I am tired of y'all using and abusing black women like y'all all of y'all money is coming from black women ain't no black men showing up watching y'all ain't no black folks showing up to y'all events and stuff it is black women out here supporting y'all and y'all out here talking crazy to them y'all out here just y'all not directly talking to them because you don't see it you don't have the range to understand it but when every time you are when you're talking about a black woman you are dragging their physical appearance and comparing a, a black woman to looking like a trans woman on a show and also like I really just don't get that I really don't get that and that boggles my mind and that's just how the industry works like these folks like ain't no such thing as council culture like it's just me taking my coins away from them and not supporting them but girl these folks oftentimes go on and do more saying some of the most idiotic crazy itch and that's just it's just blowing my mind I just really don't get it and some of the people just messaging me saying, Grant, have you seen this? I don't watch that bullshit. I don't want that negativity in my life. Speaking of black women standing up for themselves, let me tell you something. Baby, I watched all of the um, videos from Comedy Hype. Monique dragged Charlemagne the God, she dragged Steve Harvey, and she got on Oprah ass too, baby. Monique's story has stayed consistent since she first said something. I'm telling y'all, go check it out. It is on kingofreeze.com. There's a whole article written by my guy Dez, who is a new content creator, who is a new writer on kingofreeze.com. Shout out to him um, bringing his work and stuff to kingofreeze.com. Uh, but girl, that, that that's... Girl, them interviews, like, Mo Monique was telling a story. She was talking about her dealing with her mental illness and her growing. And I was just like, girl, I got all my life watching it. But, girl, I gave y'all a cute, what, 18, 20 minutes of me dragging and letting the girls have it. Um, I think that's all that I got for y'all right now, girl. I'm going to take a rest and probably have some a hot boy summer tonight, okay? Because one of my friends is in from out of town, but, girl... He want me to hang out with somebody I don't fuck with, girl. So that's going to be interesting. I'm going to go back and listen to the rest of the um, Queen Minaj, Queen Radio, um, you know, stuff that she working on. But, girl, I am throwing a birthday dinner on August the 24th in Atlanta, Georgia. Be ready for the information coming next week. I'm giving you a heads up. Go ahead and book those dates, girl. August the 24th, the end. Almost, well, I think it's the last weekend in August. Also, my birthday is on the 13th. Uh, people are asking for information about that and how they can support me for my birthday. I will be providing the links and stuff for that. I love y'all so much. And until next time, I'll talk to you later on tonight. Bye.